Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mezon African Motives. Uh, still on engineering science and three, uh, working on hydraulics. We have got a question from November 2020 question paper where we are given the first part of the question 6.1 in, uh, in this case, that is to state Pascal's law in words. Okay, that is to, to, to have a definition of this. Okay, so in this case, I have got... Uh, a diagram and also a definition in words uh, for the Pascal's laws. So this is our diagram here representing the Pascal's laws. Then the smaller piston plunger is used to apply force to the liquid and the larger piston, which is the ram in this case, is pushed upwards by the pressure of the liquid. So this is the smaller one, which is going to apply force and it pushes the ram, okay? So that is uh, what you are required to state in this case, all right? Then on uh, 6.2, we are given that there is a single acting pump, okay? is used uh, for irrigation uh, at a dam and must deliver 800 liters of water per two hours, okay? So take note here, we are given uh, the volume that is being delivered in this case of uh, 800 liters, uh, whereby we can convert this to cubic meters. Remember, a cubic meter is equivalent to 1,000 liters. So uh, that means we are going to divide by 1,000, which is going to give us something like 0 0,8. So this is 0 0,8 cubic meters, and the time that we are given in this case. So this V here is for volume, not velocity, okay? So you can just write volume so that you do not confuse each other. So the time is two hours. The time that was taken is two hours. And at a pressure of, we are given the pressure of 250 kilopascals, which is one uh, times a thousand. All right, so that is the information that we're given in this case. So the first part of the question on 6.2, we are given to calculate the 6.21, the work done per minute. All right, so take note in this case on 6.21, we need to calculate the work done per minute. All right, so remember that uh, work done actually is equivalent to pressure times the volume. So this pressure, is the one that is going to determine your work done. Is it in uh, joules per second or per minute? So if you convert this to minute, which means we are supposed to use our time in uh, the volume per second in this case, in what? In uh, per minute, not per second, all right? So we are going to have our pressure of 250 kilo. So kilo means a thousand. So that's 250 thousand multiply by the volume now. So this volume is supposed to be volume per minute so that we obtain work done per minute. So we are given a volume of 0 0.8 cubic meters over two hours, but it's supposed to be per minute. And we know that in an hour, we've got uh, 60 seconds in this case. So if we've got uh, 60 minutes, sorry, in an hour. So we've got 60 minutes, therefore we shall multiply this by 60. So this is going to be two times uh, 60. So if we multiply properly, that is going to be our work done per second in this case, all right? Uh, which means we are going to obtain 1666,667, uh, which is in measured in yours per, per minute. Take note, it's work done per minute. All right, then the output power of the pump. Remember guys that output power, whenever we are dealing with power of the pump in this case, which is the output power, that is equivalent to the pressure times the velocity, but this is uh, times the, the, vol the volume in this case, but it's supposed to be in cubic meters per second. So what does it mean? It simply means power is equivalent to, this is work done per second. So it's simply work done per, per second. If you have got joules per second, joules per second, that's a watt. So one joule per second is one watt. So for us to have our power, we are just going to quick, just convert the joules per minute that we have to joules per second. Remember one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. 
So we are going to divide by 60 in this case. The answer that we got in joules per minute, we divide by 60. So we're going to have 1666, uh, comma, 667 divide by 60. So that will be in joules per second, which is the power in watts. So if we divide by 60, we are going to obtain uh, 27,778, which is in joules per second. So like I said, joules per second simply means watts. So that's 27,778 watts. So that was the power in this case. Okay, so that was our question, guys. Uh, on the output power, uh, on 6.3, we've got an information that we are given in this case. And from this information, uh, we have got the diameter of the ram, the diameter of the plunger, uh, the stroke length of the plunger and so on and so on. All right, so we have got two things here, the, the ram and the plunger. So we can just uh, differentiate our ram uh, and our plunger in this case. All right, so for the ram, I'm just going to use the diameter as a capital letter D representing the ram. So this is millimeters, which means we are going to divide by a thousand to convert to meters. So that will be 0, 0,3 meters. The diameter of the plunger, I'm just going to use small letter D, which is going to be two centimeters. Remember, one meter, it's 100 centimeters. So we divide by 100, which is 0, 0,02 in meters. The stroke length of the plunger, which means we are given H as 80 centimeters. Again, if we divide by 100, that will be 0, 0,8 meters. So we've got 0, 0,8 meters. And the effort, which is the force on the plunger, is 270 newtons. So this is what we are given. So from this information, guys, the first part of the question is for us to calculate or to determine the force exerted by the ram, which means we need the force on the ram, which is uh, F. So I'm just going to use F, or you can use W in this case, still one and the same thing. We can choose to use capital letter F for the force on the RAM, or you can choose to use W, it's one and the same thing. All right, so in this case, uh, from our formulas also, this is uh, all about formulas, guys, okay? There is a formula that uh, we can relate from the force and diameters. Remember that the force on the plunger divided by its diameter squared is equal, the force on the RAM, sorry, and the diameter on the ram, this is the force on the plunger versus the diameter on the plunger. So this is our ram, this is the plunger, all right? So to have the force on the ram, we are just gonna multiply by d squared both sides so that we can cancel the diameter on the ram in this case. So that means in this case, the force on the uh, ram is going to be the force, which is our effort times d squared times the diameter squared of the ram. So that will be our F, which is the F uh, for the 270 Newton divided by D squared, which is our small letter D squared, which is 0, 0,02 squared times D squared, which is the diameter of the ram, which is 0, 0,3 squared. So by doing this, we can have the force, which is on the ram. So we are going to obtain uh, 60,000, 750 newton so that's 60750 newton in this case all right so that was the first part of the question uh on hydraulics from this uh, information then 6.32 the distance moved by the ram per 20 strokes of the plunger in millimeters so we need h for the ram in millimeters okay so take note that uh, if we are given the number of pumping strokes, therefore we can have this formula. Okay, so let's take down uh, this formula. We know that, uh, so this is 6.32. All right, so the diameter using the volume, we shall have this as D squared on the plunger times the stroke length times the number of pumping strokes is equivalent to the diameter squared times the distance moved by the ram. So this edge is the distance moved by the ram. So this is the one that we want to calculate. So we can simply divide by d squared both sides by d squared both sides. So this can cancel. So that means h is equivalent to d squared uh, times h times any over, over d squared. So this on top is for the plunger. This diameter is the diameter for the plunger, the small letter D for the plunger, which is 0, 0,02. So that's 0, 0,02 squared times H, which is the height 
uh, that we are given in this case of 0, 0,8 on the plunger here, we've got a 0, 0,8. So that's 0, 0,8 times any, the number of pumping strokes. Remember we are given for 20 pumping strokes on the question. So you're going to multiply by N, which is 20, divide by D squared. So this is the diameter of the RAM. And on the RAM, remember that the diameter D squared for the RAM here is 0, 0,3. So this will be 0, 0,3 squared. So by doing this, we shall have our H in meters because we are using diameter height. Everything is in meters. So you are going to obtain uh, 0, 0, 0,07111 and so on in meters. So remember, we are given to calculate this in millimeters. So if a meter is equivalent to 1,000 millimeters, to convert to millimeters, you can multiply by 1,000. So if we are to multiply by 1,000, in this case, to convert to millimeters, we are going to obtain uh, 71,111 in millimeters. All right, so this is our H in millimeters, uh, which is uh, the distance that was moved by the ram for 20 pumping strokes on the plunger. All right, then on 6.32, 6.33, we are now given the number of pumping strokes, which is N by the plunger, okay, required by the plunger to lift a load of height. So we are given the height of 54 uh, uh, millimeters, take note, which, which is our H, the H that we are calculating before. Now we are given that our H is 54 uh, millimeters. So if our H is 54 millimeters, we can divide by 1,000 to meters, which is going to be 0, 0.054 in meters, since the other values there are in meters. So we have got H in this case, we need N. So we are going to use the same formula that we had before, uh, this formula that we had before on 6.32. Uh, so this is 6.33. So remember that from our formula said D squared times H times N is equivalent to D squared times H. This time you need to calculate the number of pumping strokes. So you divide by D squared H by D squared times H. So this gives us N. So N is going to be D squared, uh, that is D squared on the, on the RAM times H, which is the distance moved by the RAM over D squared times H on the plunger. So our N, remember the diameter, for, for the RAM, in this case, D squared is 0, 0,3 squared. So this is 0, 0,3 squared times H now. The H is the one that we are given now. So remember, we are given that our H is 54 millimeters, which is 0, uh, 0, 0,054. So we are going to multiply to 0, uh, 0, 0,054. So this is 0, 0, 0,054. For everything over D squared on the plunger, remember on the plunger D squared is 0, 0,02, 0, 0,02 squared times H on the plunger, which does not, which is not changing, that's 0, 0,8. So this is going to give us uh, the number of pumping strokes. In this case, if we are to simplify this properly on our calculator, we shall obtain 15, 1875. Uh, that is going to approximate to 15 to the nearest whole number in this case. So we are going to have 15 uh, pumping strokes in this case. All right, so that was the question, guys. That's what we had on hydraulics from this question paper of November uh, 2020. So those are the typical questions on how they ask you. So you have to be very, very careful on how to attempt uh, these typical questions. Uh, by revising more question papers that can actually help you to be more careful uh, in exam. All right, so that's what we had from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.